Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is the president of Victory Fighting Championships. Their next fight card is coming up next Friday night. Victory FC 54 in Omaha at the Baxter Arena. Ryan Stoddard. Ryan, appreciate the time. You've got two title fights on this card, but uh, maybe the most notable about it is the fact of you got Rob Emerson trying to become a two-division champion. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're super excited for that fight. We think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Um, you know, Ryan Roberts and Rob Emerson are, are two guys that just are known to throw down no matter what. So, uh, you know, I think that's going to be a super exciting matchup, and I'm I'm really actually very excited for that fight. It's probably one of the few fights that uh, I've been able to put together this year, even though it wasn't originally planned. That you know, I think will will highlight 2016 for me. Is that kind of the toughest thing about being a promoter is, you know, uh, it's kind of any day, you know, things can change. One fighter falls out and, and you got, I mean, is that pretty much uh, you just hate looking at your phone every morning because you don't know whether uh, there's something that's going to cause a little bit of a headache for you? You know, the injury bug is, is uh, she is, she's just relentless. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Dana, Dana used to always have this quote and it's, it's funny because, you know, I've, him and I have, had a face to face time a couple of times and I've, I've, you know, said this to him, you know, in person before that, uh, he, he's said multiple times, um, every day I wake up, bad shit happens. Mm-hmm. And I kind of live by that moniker as a promoter because, you know, you can, you can bitch and moan for lack of better words all you want, but at the end of the day, I have a job to do. I have to fix it. You know, I have to ensure the fans are entertained um, in house as well as um, throughout the world on Fight Pass, and, and make sure you know our athletes uh, that that you know aren't injured, you know, still continue uh, to have fights. With your promotion uh, being on on Fight Pass, is it? Do you find it? It's easier to uh, find fighters who want to fight for you now, as maybe opposed to before when you did not have that deal. Um. Yes and no. Uh, before you know. I was able to kind of fill fights with guys that I could, you know, get my hands on. And now more or less that I have expectations of athletes that we want to use um, that are going to represent our, our, our show on our broadcast. So I've gotten pickier. And so therefore it's hurt us a little bit, especially on fighting short term short term fixes. But at the same time, it's, it's made the overall show better. And, you know, the, the, the kids that are the real deal, the ones that, want to make this their this career this their career um they want to uh you know go to the ufc they they want more than to just be a local superstar um those guys have come out of the woodwork you know i have multiple kids from hawaii that have signed with us that they are just so thankful you know that to be able to have a show like victory that puts them on a platform for them to be seen and make it to that next level and and similar with guys that were in the ufc at one point in time you know were cut they've seen what victory is and, and have fallen in love with it. Guys like Yuri Villafort and, and Mike Rhodes are, are, you know, fans of the show because, because of the way we operate our events and, 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 and push forward and, and try to, you know, make the best show possible. It's, it's a uh, fight pass is a, a gift and a curse. I'll call it, but, but mainly it's been a massive gift. Um, I, I couldn't be any happier with the relationship with the UFC and, and uh, how well our broadcasts have done so far mentioning about uh, those Hawaiian fighters, you got a rematch in the main event uh, between Patolo and Kane, a matchup that took place here earlier this year where uh, Patolo, he clearly won the fight, but he, he did miss weight uh, at, at 172 pounds. Uh, was it kind of one of those things that it was a natural rematch to make? Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, it was a, it was a very, very entertaining fight. You know, even though he clearly won the decision, it's funny because people can say somebody won the decision, but somebody else won the fight. Um, you know, and uh, Cassius definitely had his moments throughout that entire fight. I mean, he was always just one shot away from, from being able to uh, take that win. And, you know, truthfully, he uh, he was only preparing for a three-round fight. Mm-hmm. You know, he stepped up on like two days notice, three days notice, and, uh, you know, was willing to make the change and, you know, um, Maki and, and me both felt it was very, he was very deserving of, of another fight uh, of that rematch and so here we are 
you know, it, it's one of those fights, as I went back and watched it, uh, you know, Kane, the problem with Kane in that fight, he spent a lot of time in some really bad positions. Um, no, he did, and I think that showed him that there are a lot of holes in his game that he needs to work on, and I know he's been uh, working on them going into this fight. And um, At the same time, it, it showed some holes in Maki's games that I think he needs to work on, and, and both of them uh, – you know, need to clearly try to close those gaps in, in their overall uh, skill set before they go to the UFC. So it was a good learning experience for both of them. I mean, you're never going to come out of a five round fight and not have, you know, 10 times more experience than you would if you came in and, and got the quick 60 second knockout. When it comes to this fight card next Friday night, is is there an under the radar fight that no one is talking about, but uh, you it's a matchup that you have your eyes particularly on? You know, honestly, from start to finish, I'm I'm more than excited for this show. Um, we originally started with nine pro fights, three title fights. We're now down to seven pro fights, two title fights. Um, you know, that injury bug has, has been uh, a tough one, unfortunately. Um, we had to make a switch, and Bernard Thomas is no longer on the card. Um, so Mike Plazola, who just won at VFC 53, is actually going to replace him against Pete Pettis. And, and that fight is just going to be fantastic um you know i would honestly recommend don't blink in that one and then um bryce logan and, and uh robbie uh Ostevich is going to be a lot of fun you know robbie's coming in making his mainland debut from hawaii um both same record similar skill sets and uh that one should be a lot of fun to look at and then um you know sadiq youssef is man that kid's a monster you know we have we have high hopes for him in the future and um, but Devin Turner is, is uh, an individual who's, who's not going to roll over. So uh, there's a lot of solid fights on the card, and um, you know I'm just really excited uh, uh, for everybody to, to tune in that night. I, I know uh, Pete Petty's kind of been following his career, and I, I know that he is a fighter that for a while he just had a hard time finding fights because guys weren't weren't willing to step up and fight him. Did you have any of those issues in terms of fighting? You know, you know, with his initial matchup, and then uh, you know finding him a new opponent. Actually, he was the replacement. Um, you know, when we talk about that injury bug, it, it originally was Bernard Thomas and a, and a gentleman from here in Omaha, and then the, the kid from Omaha got hurt, and um, Sadiq was already coming in for that fight, so it just made sense to, you know, bring in uh, Pete, and, and, and Pete's, you know, chomping at the bit to be able to get, you know, fights in front of him. And so, honestly, for us, it, it hasn't been that difficult to find people because, you know, I, I do all the matchmaking for the show, and I tell these guys, I'm not going to give you. It's we're not here to baby you. You know, you're you're not going to get cupcakes. I mean, I think there's a reason that you look at Brazilians or or certain individuals from from Europe that uh, are in the UFC right now that only have seven, eight, nine pro fights that make their debuts and, and they look phenomenal versus guys that you know are, are from the United States and you know uh, for a long time from the Midwest that they had. 10, 12, 14, 15 fights and, you know, weren't quite to that level. Well, that's because, you know, in Europe and Brazil, these guys were, were fighting monsters, you know, to get to that level. So they, they didn't have those, those easy wins their first couple fights out. I mean, it was, it was a, a you know, tough test from the get-go. And I think, uh, you know, cream rises to the top and, and the best guys are going to end up in the, 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 that position to, to go to the UFC coming out of our organization and, and those will be the best representatives um, for the victory brand in, inside the UFC. And, of course, after this event, this is not your last event of the year. You have Victory uh, Fighting Championships 55 coming up on December the 23rd in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, once again, going with uh, multiple title fights. Uh, I know you've, you've had all these fi title fights over the last month. Uh, but uh, you got Jake Lindsay and Dakota Cochran uh, going to be headlining this card, light, lightweight matchups. Also, you got your heavyweight champion, uh, Daniel Gallimore, uh, against Derek uh, Boley. Uh, first off, uh, let, let the fans know about what they can expect from that card. Well, and, and once again, you talk about changes. Um, Jake Lindsay versus Dakota Cochran is actually going to be a five-round non-title fight at 170. Um, Dakota uh, doesn't want to make the cut to 55 anymore. Um, him and Jake's first fight was at 170. Um, in fact, Jake was clearly winning that fight um, up until about the last 90 seconds and Dakota caught him with a clean right hand and was able to get that guillotine. Um, Jake Jake wanted that fight back bad. 
So when the opportunity for us to switch it up and, and, you know, bring Dakota in for that second fight, um, Jake just jumped at the chance to get that one back. And, uh, you know, the first fight was an absolute blast. So, you know, who was I to say no to the, to the second one? So we only have one title fight going into that fight. And that's, uh, Daniel Gallimore versus Derek Bohai, who are about as polar opposites of styles as you could ever find. You know, uh, Daniel Gallimore is a big heavy hitter and, uh, Derek Bohai is, uh, uh, I think his Instagram and Twitter is Marshmallow B- BJJ. Uh, guy loves him some jujitsu. I know he competes often. He owns a jujitsu gym in Kansas City, and um, it, they're both guys that have fought on the regional circuit around here. Derek's got a great record. You know, Gallimore's coming off that big win over Abe Wagner. Um, stylistically, it, it's it's whoever can impose what first. I mean, you know how these heavyweights are. Uh, first person to land a shot could, could end it, and uh, mm-hmm. or you could see Gallimore being for a very short night, depending on if if uh, Bohai can get this this fight to the mats. But at at the same point, we've really never seen Daniel be put in bad positions on on the uh, on the ground. So I honestly don't know where that skill set's going to lie. I've seen Derek Bohai submit some pretty big, uh, really good jiu-jitsu guys, and. Um, so from that standpoint, I, I got to think he's got the edge going into it. But, but that's why we make the fight, so we can see what happens, right? Exactly. But, of course, first up is tight uh, is Victory Fighting Championships 54 coming up uh, next Friday night. Uh, I, are tickets still available for the fight card? Yes, you can pick up tickets to all of our events on our, our uh, website, victoryfighter.com. Um, in fact, these next two events are also available on Ticketmaster, but we have some other options out there. Uh, for group sales and, and other individual ringside stuff. So the best bet is to visit our website um, to, to find the, the best option for you.